in the book, I almost do surgery and repair chapter by chapter, step by step. It's strategically written to walk people out of being a victim and into being a child that lives in the courts of the king, which is our father. And so the image is that we are loved by God, we are adopted in, and we receive everything that God has through Jesus Christ. It's time for another episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, digging into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my special guest is my good friend, Kevin Zaydai, and we're going to be discussing his new book, It's Rigged in Your Favor, How Would You Live If You Knew You Wouldn't Fail? Kevin, my friend, welcome back to the show. Hello, Sean. I'm really excited about this show. This is amazing. Everything is doing well with me, and I'm so glad I'm here. Thank you. Well, Kevin, it's always always a blessing to talk to you, and we're going to skip a little bit of my normal format. A lot of times with return guests, I'll ask them to tell us a little bit of their origin story again for the new listeners or catch us up on what they've been doing recently in ministry. Today, we're actually doing some back-to-back interviews. And so in the show notes for this episode, I'll refer to my most recent episode with Kevin before this one, where you can find out about a little bit of his story, a little bit of a testimony of the amazing ministry trip he just had to Australia. So again, head over to SeanTabbitt.com for this episode. I'll have that all linked up into the show notes. But Kevin, before we get into our talk about your brand new book, I want to take a few minutes to talk about your new album. For those of you who heard me talk with Kevin in past episodes, I'm a huge fan of his music. He's got a new album called Warrior Notes Volume 4, Altar Fire. First, tell us a little bit about your journey into music. Before we talk into the new album, I think it's important that we share a little bit of this interesting part of your testimony because you weren't always able to play instruments. So I I think it's kind of interesting how you got started and moving in the direction of doing multiple albums. So. Tell us a bit of that first. Yeah, Sean, this is a good subject because I was in college and was told by the Lord to take music theory, and I didn't even want to do that. I wasn't interested in it at all because I was a voice major, and I had to know some theory, but he wanted me to learn how to write music and all that goes with that. So I actually took college courses and learned how to write, but I was a voice major just to make that the emphasis here. So when I had this happen to me later on in 1992, I had that operation and saw the Lord and he took me. I didn't know it, but when he sent me back, I had the ability to play instruments, which I didn't learn. I didn't take lessons. I was a voice major, so I just learned how to sing in college. So I could go to the keyboard and start playing, and I started picking up instruments. And my pastor flipped out because he witnessed all of this. Can you imagine, like, I'm showing up for the worship service, and every couple months I would have a new instrument that I would play in the worship team. So that's how this all happened. I got the ability, didn't know it. Jesus never addressed it to me, but when I came back, I could play instruments. So that's why the Lord told me to start making albums of just uh, heavenly music without words. The first three were working into more of words now with some of the albums. But that's how it all started, Sean. It was like a supernatural thing that I didn't even know had happened to me. Let's talk about Warrior Notes Volume 4, Altar Fire. would love to have you talk a little bit, you know, where did this theme come from and what's your sense? How is God wanting to communicate and impact people through this new album? Well, to tell you the truth, he's been dealing with me about the Holy Fire for about a year now, and he's getting us ready for what's about to happen on the earth and the great harvest. And so the whole idea is is that we are a living sacrifice and that the Holy Spirit is also, as we see in the book of Acts, when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, he came as fire. So this album has the idea of the holy fire, and it's a worship-type album, but it's more still in the area of meditating on the Word of God, because it doesn't have a lot of words. It's just kind of music that you can pray to and meditate to. But the whole idea here is is that the anointing that's on this album, when we made this album, the power of God was so strong, it was like there was holy fire. I really literally felt as though the Holy Spirit was burning on uh, all of us, and we captured that in a recording. And I'm curious, Kevin, we've talked about your three previous albums in earlier interviews, and 
If you had to try to contrast the experience of pulling things together for the Alter Fire album versus the other albums, is there anything unique or special that really stood out about this experience? Did God move in a different way this time? Yes. You know, usually I bring people in and they do different parts of the album, and I usually play between four and six instruments myself. But on this one, it was more of a live captured experience with a group three o'clock session who are friends of mine. And they came in and we just essentially had no agenda. We let the Holy Spirit move. We played for about an hour and a half and the album will be whittled down to uh, about 55 minutes. And so this is more of a capture of the Holy Spirit moving upon different musicians in a profound prophetic way. And we captured it on tape, on recording, The Holy Fire. And we just are so excited about this one. It's going in a good direction, but I'm including other people in now from now on on my recordings. And I would honestly describe your albums as soaking music. The previous three albums, I find them very helpful to have them playing in the background when I'm trying to be alone with God and meditating, reading the Bible and praying. And I, and I suspect that's how a lot of people use your music. I'm just curious to hear, you know, have people given any feedback? How are they using the music to be blessed and encouraged? Well, the feedback we've got was from everyone was involved so far in the recording, even the people that were in the sound room, they were hit. They were touched by God. Mm. They were, it was an amazing experience for everybody that was involved with it. They were overcome. So the biggest thing I've heard from the feedback is that it has a lot of peace on it, that that peace just comes over you. It's an encounter. People were telling me and from the sound room while we were recording, they said, it was like I encountered God himself in the music, which is profound to us. Well, Kevin, thanks for uh, taking a bit of time to tell us about the new album. We're recording this interview actually in late October. What is the official release date for the new album? When will people be able to go out and get that? I'm making it available for Sid Roth to launch in a show that will probably air in January. And so it will be available in January of 2020, and it'll come out on the Sid Roth show, Alter Fire, with the book It's Rigged that we're going to be talking about. Perfect. Well, if you're listening to this in January 2020, which is when I'll be releasing this episode or later, you'll be able to pick up a copy of this new book and the album through Sid Roth's at Supernatural, or I'm sure by that time, the album will also be available on Kevin's site and elsewhere. Again, we'll be sure to link all of that up in the show notes for you to make it easy so you can just click on through and get your own copy of the book and the new album. So let's transition, Kevin, over into our discussion about your new book. I would love to have you just talk to us a bit about like when did you first encounter the life-changing truth, kind of the premise, the main topic of the book. When did that first become real to you? Well, to tell you the truth, Sean, just like the listener may know about my experience in 1992 when I died on the operating table, it was actually revealed to me then, and I have a succession of books that I need to write. This is just one in a many of the revelations that Jesus gave me. To tell you the truth, John, I really have over 50 books still to write, and this is just one in a sequence of many. And so this was given to me in 1992. And the Lord released for me to write this book. It's one of my favorites, just so you know, this is one of my favorite topics. It's interesting to me to see the number of messages that God has placed in your heart. You know, I'm familiar with so many of your books now at this point. And just when I think you've plumbed the depths, you come up with another book. And I'm like, oh my gosh, here's a new amazing truth, something I've never considered before. And so I I think readers are going to be blown away by what they encounter in this new book. Kevin, in terms of people getting a hold of this idea of it all being rigged in our favor, like what are some of the things that hold us back from really embracing or grasping this sort of a message? Because as I was looking through the book last night, getting ready for the interview, I felt like so much of what you share came down to identity and what we believe. And, you know, I think a lot of times we get stuck in a place where we think it's almost too good to be true. God couldn't really love me this much. So what are the things we need to wrestle with internally to be ready to really receive and walk in this message? Okay, so that's a very good question. The key that I found out from Jesus is that we are conditioned in this life as victims. We're victimized and we're traumatized by the enemy and by this world. It's a fallen world. So the wrestling that goes on in our identity has to do with the way we're treated, 
the way things are, it seems like everything is stacked against us. So it's really in our eyes and our experience in this world, it's almost like you're fighting against this invisible entity we call our enemy and, and the demonic, but it's almost like it's rigged against us. And so the Lord said, no, it's rigged in your favor. And he showed me. And so I go through it step by step, how we are written in heaven as being children of God. When we accept Jesus as Lord, then we're adopted into the family, according to Romans chapter eight fifteen, And then we identify with God as our father. And he showed me that the thing that everyone's wrestling with is a father image. He told me that this is a fatherless generation and that the enemy has stolen from the people the idea of a true father. So in the book, I almost do surgery and repair chapter by chapter, step by step. It's strategically written to walk people out of being a victim and into being a child that lives in the courts of the king, which is our father. And so the image is that we are loved by God, we are adopted in, and we receive everything that God has through Jesus Christ. I think one of the most empowering things I've encountered in your books, and you talk about this in the new book as well, is this idea that each of us has a personal destiny. You know, God's written a book over our lives or about our lives, and that's up in heaven right now. I feel like this is a topic we can't talk about enough when we get together and do these interviews. So on the one hand, how do we press in and really try to understand our destiny, our calling, what's written over our lives? And then I would also ask, how do we best position ourselves to start moving towards moving in our destiny? Okay, that's a really good question. First of all, like I said about turning it into a situation where the enemy is a victim and we're no longer victims. And that only comes by getting rid of the what I call the identity crisis that we have, and that is, is that we identify ourselves with Jesus Christ and what he did for us, and that we don't deserve what we've been given, but it has been given nonetheless, and we have to synchronize ourselves with heaven now through the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, mixing those two together, and we start to walk with God, and we don't base our relationship on what happens to us. So in other words, I don't look for an encounter. I don't look for a manifestation. I look to God, and then He fulfills His part. For instance, some people don't receive healing, but I don't stop laying hands on people just because some people don't get healed. Because God is the healer, I'm supposed to lay hands on people. And it's the same way with us down here. Sean, I believe that all the books in heaven show that we are not victims, that we are children, and we can overcome. So walking this out is allowing ourselves through the crucified life, and that's a big subject there, but Jesus said, if you want to have any part of me, you've got to deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow me. And even Paul said, it's no longer I that live, but it's Christ that lives in me. My life is not my own anymore. So this is the key. I saw that the enemy, one day, I I remember this happening. I woke up, and I was no longer a victim, Sean. I was loved by my Father in heaven, And the enemy knew it. And since that day, Sean, things have turned around. I can tell you where I was standing. And everything in my life started to turn around. And I started to talk to my wife about it. And then I started talking to all my friends about it. And it just flipped. And I said, you know what? I'm going to write a book. It's time to write this book. It's rigged in your favor. I'm going to just make a declaration for this book right now. And I I know when we talked earlier, you said that you feel like this may be your, your most powerful book to date or one of the most powerful messages that God's given you thus far. I'm really having a sense that this is going to be such a huge, empowering message. I feel like this book is going to, from a sales perspective, an impact perspective, I think it's going to outshine everything we've seen from you to date, because this is precisely the message that is needed for people both inside and outside the church in this hour. When it comes to the fatherless generations, the motherless generations, we're multiple generations in at this point where people are broken and listless and they just feel like they don't belong. Their identity is very messed up. And this is precisely the sort of message that they need to hear, that they are sons and daughters of the king, that their life has a purpose, their life has a mission, and that God is for them. And so I'm just going to declare that this book is going to exceed anything you and I are dreaming about right now. I think it's going to do far more with that. I'm just crazy excited to see what God does, how he moves, and just the numerous testimonies we're going to hear about how God uses this book to transform 
people's lives. I'm just excited and encouraged. This is why I do what I do. This is why I work in publishing. This is why you write books because we want to see people's lives change. But I think everything we're feeling about it is completely true. How are you feeling about this book at this point, Kevin? Well, I want to tell you, Sean, you know, I legitimately passed away on the, the operating table and I was in eternity. Now, there were no clocks up there. It wasn't like it is down here. I'm telling you the truth. Jesus gave me the opportunity. He said, if you go back, he said, I'll insert you back into your generation and you can begin to speak and shift mindsets and perceptions so that they end up back on track. And I didn't realize that in eternity, there is no time. There's no clocks. There's nothing. So he inserted me back in and he told me that I need to write these books. And this one, I'm telling you, Sean, when people start to realize who they are in this time that we live in, you're going to see such a harvest, an end time harvest of souls, because people are going to see that they do legitimately have a part to play in their generation. I'm telling you, Sean, I saw that this book was going to do better than anything I've ever written. Wow. Well, I guess the best thing I can say to that is amen. And I'm just excited to see how that all <laughs> unfolds. Kevin, in terms of people wanting to connect with you, finding out more about this new book, your new album, where are some of the places they can find you on the web? Okay, I'm, I'm actually everywhere. I have my own YouTube channel. I have my ministry page, which is kevinzadai.com, and I have everything available there with links for everything, all the media. And also I have the school, warriornutschool.com, and that is right now at 5,260 students. And I have courses that I offer on all these subjects we've talked about. Well, and like we do with every episode, we'll have detailed links in the show notes, places where you can connect with Kevin, pick up your own copies of his books and albums, and find out more about the school. Head on over to SeanTabbitt.com. It'll be all there for you. It's time to bring this episode of the Sean Tabbitt Show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation with Kevin Zadai. Once again, our book today was It's Rigged in Your Favor, How Would You Live If You Knew You Wouldn't Fail? Again, to connect with Kevin, a great place to start is his website. Once again, you can find that over at KevinZadai.com. And Kevin, I just want to say thanks so much for sharing with us today. It's been a great pleasure and an honor to have you back on the show. Thank you, Sean. It was a great opportunity, and, and just God bless you. And I'm just believing that God is going to do amazing things in the days ahead. Mm-hmm.